Well, welcome, Collider fans, to the Top 10 <laughs> Show. Thanks for joining us again this week to watch our handsome mugs <laughs> count down another Top 10 list. And in classic Top 10 form, there's Matt Nose breaking protocol, as <laughs> yeah, always, yeah. being the rebel on this show. It wasn't. <laughs> it was just a lapse, a momentary lapse. Conversation off air kind of bleeding into we're still in a talking mode. And then, oh, Jesus, they did do a countdown. I need to pay attention. He's, to he's, he's, a, he's a big, dumb animal, folks. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Hey, I'm John Roca. As I said, that was Matt Nose. Thanks so much for joining us. We are counting down this week the top 10 talking animals on film. Could be live action, could be animated. That's what we're doing this week. Uh, for those of you who are new to the show, the way the show works is we uh, pick a topic every week and then we show up on the set. Matt and I make our top 10 lists without telling each other what it is. Then we talk about it on the show. And at the end of the show, we compile a top 10 list that is the show's top 10 list. Matt knows, does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds pretty much right. <laughs> <laughs> That was a weird handoff. I don't think you've ever done that. It's like the second time ever you've described the breaking down of the show. Right. And you turned to me and just, uh, that was beautiful. I feel like we're on like a 70s game show. Yes, that is right. When we show back up here, the way yeah. we do the show yes, is... Yes, please tell them. Uh, I'll do my bottom three. John does his bottom three. I do my two. And next two, he does his next two. And then we trade one apiece. Once we've revealed the top, our personal top tens, that's when we create the shows. Right. Boof. Nailed yeah. it. Nailed it. Two weeks in a row. If we have... Two things on our list, yes. and they're separated by like you know a few different spots. Mine's lower, his is higher. He'll tell me to punt and vice versa. So we'll save the conversation for later, basically. Right. And then if we have two that are close... We'll talk about them, which yeah. is what we're supposed to do. Talk about film, right? <laughs> That's what we're supposed to do. Anyway, <laughs> what, the reason we chose a Top 10 Talking Animals is because of Universal Studios' release of The Secret Life of Pets. Yes. Matt, any opinion on this film, on these trailers? Like, are you going to go see it? Is this your kind of film? Uh, I will wait for the first wave. Okay. And let them report back. Send right. send help back if you need it. <laughs> and if you do, I think I might sit on the sidelines on this battle. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm yeah. not going to go charging in after this one. If it's yeah. not good, I'm not going to see it. I got a feeling this is the same thing. I'm in the same boat with you. Like I'm going to wait till the reviews come out, and if the reviews are good, then I'll go and yeah. see it. Because I saw Finding Dory last night, finally, and I enjoyed the heck out of that. And I wanted to wait till the reviews came in on that, because I wasn't dialed into the trailer. I know you were hesitant when it first really came was. up and I was like I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Let's see what they do. I you know, I'll give them enough of a leash cuz they've they earned it with the first movie. Right. And Pixar's come back with great sequels. You're like, "Hey, go for it, guys. I believe in you." Yeah. Boom. All right, well, let's get this going. Matt Nost, do you want to kick us off? Is there anything you want to say before we start? Um there's going to be a lot of omissions. Even for me personally, I wanted to have like a a, a wider array in my list mm -hmm. because I could just go, "You know what? I'm going to pick from, you know, these three different types of things, so right. to speak. I don't want to tip my hand too much, saying sure. how much love I throw to something, but uh, just like from this company or this company or whatever else, or mm -hmm. this director. Uh, so I wanted to pep it around and yeah. try and go different genres, different, you know, do a little bit interesting things, I guess. Right. So anyway, my number 10 yes. is a character I loved as a kid, which is Tigger. Oh, is nice. List? Okay. No, because I haven't seen a Winnie the Pooh movie with Tigger. So for me, I was focusing on only films. Oh, All really? my characters are characters that are in films only because the top 10 show we talk about films. Yeah, but but I've, your seen stuff over, in, hey, hey. I've seen Tigger in movies. There, there we go. That's what, good. What, what do you mean? Did you Tigger's see not in? a movie character to Did you, you see it? What movie did you see I have to look up on IMDb Probably to Winnie see the Pooh specifically. Movie. It's been years, but I always loved Tigger. What's wrong with having Tigger no, on in, your list? Wait, is he in Bambi? No, that's Winnie the Pooh. Tigger's yeah, Winnie no, the Pooh. Thumper. You're thinking Thumper. Yeah, right. Anyway. Right there. That's, is that Tigger? That's him. That's it. What does he do something with that's his tail? Him. What does he do with a his tail? A character that's been around for, I don't know, 80, 90 years. I know who Tigger is. <laughs> it's right there. It's been in numerous movies. I can't believe yeah. i got to defend no, the don't. honor of Tigger right no, no, now. No, please. Well, apparently I just did. Well, you did. You did and a great job. I vanquished job. my opponent. You did excellent. Yes, you did. I yes. gladly stay beaten on the, on I, the field I of battle. I love Tigger. He was one of the first characters I latched onto as a kid. And yeah. Winnie the Pooh had more of a resurgence for like my cousins who were 10 years younger, eight years younger than mm -hmm. me. And I saw all the movies they were watching. I was like, God, how can you not love this character watching these you know, films with them? Right. And I experienced it almost anew through their eyes, and it was fantastic. Uh, so I've always loved Tigger since I was a kid. I just And it was tough to put him on because there's... There's like four or five others I wanted on this list. This was a surprisingly tough yeah. list to create. You're right about that. There were so many choices. And I stayed in film and, and, and characters that were in films, like extended long films. So for me, like hour and a half, whatever, like to me, that's what I focused on. So yeah. if certain things are missing from my list, the reason they're missing from my list is because that's criteria in my head that I had. It's fine. So Bugs Bunny is not on my list. I just want to say that off the bat. That's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. You have, you have your list? Yes. I have my that's list. That's right. That's what makes our show. What's there your number you nine? 
Uh, number nine. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the more I wanted to go, uh, have a little fun. Fantastic Mr. Fox. We we're punting. Can okay. you believe it? There you go. It could be, okay. We're punting. We All are right. punting. I was about to be like, hey, let's uh, celebrate the fact that we're going to punt, and that doesn't make any sense. Play the whistle. Play the there's whistle. that there's gorgeous graphic, graphic once again. Right. What's, there what's, it your, is. what's your number eight? My number eight <laughs> is uh, one that I was surprised made my list in this high, mm -hmm. which is Poe from uh, Kung Fu Panda. That's press my number nine. Let's is talk it? about it. Yeah, I was really surprised it made my list, yeah. too. Couldn't believe how much I loved the first one. Yeah. And then I loved the second one. Mm -hmm. It just built, and they've managed to flesh out those characters, especially Jack Black as the voice. That's the thing. He's easily my favorite part of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they do the martial arts so well that the physics looks real for the characters. They yeah. all have their specialties, given the nature of their body and like the, the physiology of it and all that stuff. And right. to watch it come to life and through his voice, the arc of his characters, it grows up, tries to find his place in the world. It's an yeah. adopted son. He finds his family. You know, yeah. they do such an amazing job. And I've, I've loved that character since the first time I saw it. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I was not, I'm not always the biggest Jack Black fan. I think when he hits it, he hits it well. And then other times when he doesn't, it really just bothers me, grates on me. But with, with Poe, he it is, to me, it is one of the greatest things he's ever done in his career. Yeah. He just brings a lot of, he brings a lot of like restrained humor where other, in other parts he's like over the top, but it's playful, it's vulnerable, it's real. You can connect to it because he's just trying to fit in. Yeah. He's just trying to be loved and he's just trying to follow his But vision. he's also like, basically he's a grown in the first one he's just getting out of being like he's a grown yeah. fat kid yeah a grown fat kid that's Absolutely. what he is Absolutely. He just and then finally has to like you know what you're more than that you need to push yourself you need right. to do these things and grow and he does there's still that struggle of i liked being lazy yeah i liked eating all the time what's right. wrong with that right right but you know as he has to grow up and mature but you know as we all do yeah and it's great because it progresses to the point where he's teaching other Pandas by the third one about how to find their place in the world and yeah. be themselves and like embrace with it. So they don't go through what he went through for all those formative years. Yeah, it's great. It's a great way to give back for the character. And I think I it totally works. And I love what he does with it. So that was your number, your number eight, right? That was it. Okay. What do you got? My number 10 is Iago from Aladdin. Okay. I absolutely love what Gilbert Gottfried does with this character in the movie Aladdin. Yeah. Can't he impeach is, it. Yeah. You, he's so funny and he's so, he's so not in the movie at all, but it still works because the movie's so insane with what it does. Like, why is there a George Will ref or, or a William Buckley reference from, oh, I don't, from, I, I from Robin Williams? don't even know. <laughs> that film. one I saw in the theater and I didn't ask my dad afterwards. I was like, yeah. what are prefo quotes? Yeah. And uh, I've held uh, on to that uh, every, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. a few prefo quotes <laughs> as he flows through. But Godfrey is, this was a He's tough so omission. This fantastic. was one of my of like, God, yeah. man, this guy was just dynamite. Yeah. And only being in like six scenes, really, seven yeah. scenes. Yeah, I mean, it might've been so, old, longer ones, but. Yeah, but he steals every scene he's in because yeah. of the the way he delivers the dialogue, the way he has the humor, the way the jokes he does, and the way he's always busting Jafar's balls, even though he's Jafar's but it's like second in command in a way, you know. But it works. It's well, yeah, funny. ultimately he will do anything for him. But yeah. it is see, it good to see him get like undercut yeah, every yeah. once and again. And the look they, which with they animated them, he has this yeah. like devilish little grin on his times when he's right. sticking it to him every time. <laughs> that big it's old the smile. best. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. All right, so we said my number nine was uh, Poe from Kung Fu Panda. So my number eight. Eight is Baloo from the Jungle Book, oh, the man. 1967 version. We are definitely punting. Okay, all right. We are punting. Woof, big time. My, my soul right now is marginally pierced that is that is low on your list. Right? Just a little sliver of Does my soul just you? died. It hurts you the way it hurt me that Raiders of the Lost Ark was number seven on your list for uh Stephen Because Spielberg, which Crusade was, ridiculous. was two. Okay. So you have, I can't have, I could put two, three. Sure. I have zero problem with doing that, you but should've. I'm like, you know what? Because he did, you know, numerous of these, why yeah. don't we yeah. separate? Give him a little gap. Sure, sure. And then where's, is ET on our talking list? ET's not on my talking list. <laughs> Surprised you brought it up. <laughs> That's all. I like to lean into the anger. I like to lean no. in. You to like the to anger. lean into the punch. That's true. Which is the last thing as a fighter you're ever supposed no, to do. No. You, when you see it coming, stick your chin out. I'm like Brian stick Dennehy. I'm sticking my head out. So you punch <laughs> it like Gladiator. That oh, reference. dude, that was brutal. I tried that with my friends a couple of times after we saw it in high school. <laughs> just to see. We, not, we didn't throw to see reasons as hard as you could, <laughs> but you'd like hit it to see like, oh, that would hurt more than another. So I swear to God, just tried it. Another person would try and block. <laughs> all right. So it's a good time. It's what you do when you're 15. I apologize. Of course. What's your number seven? Uh, my number seven is uh, Robin Hood. Oh, the, the Fox. Disney. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, Not on my list. But there's another one I, I saw as a kid and I absolutely yeah. fell in love with. There's numerous characters in this. I just think in yeah. another film, they do it better with basically the same characters. Right. You know, a snake, a bear. Sure. A different kind of cat. 
Sure. Uh, but Robin Hood is the yeah. best part of this movie, in my opinion. I, he's got all the heart, the soul. Mm -hmm. You you see him have fun at times. It's very very playful, but at the same time, like when he's down, he has to be picked back up. He's very human. Yeah. And they managed to actually have a nice character arc, and I assume is like an eighty minute movie, yeah. eighty five minute movie. Yeah, it's like it's short, standard. Yeah. And as a kid, when the first time I saw it, it was just pure magic. There's a bunch right. of Disney from that area, or pardon me, from that era that are some of my favorite films yeah. because I saw them at an age and they've just always had that magic. Yeah, and I think I think this is a great one you bring up because it was really hard not to make this all Disney. It's I know. really this hard. This was one of the ones of, I, yeah. I could have done easily in all Disney. Yeah. Or in all Disney without Pixar. Yeah, you could have done all Pixar. Like, yeah, all Pixar. There's, right. So I was like, I want to do different things because I could just sit here and do Dis Disney all day. Yeah, yeah. And if Ogres were animals, uh, DreamWorks would have been real in there. You could do all 10 DreamWorks too. All right, what's your number six? Uh, my number six is Kermit the Frog. That's, we're punting. Okay. All right. Uh, All right that, was, that was an easy punt. Like, yes. You know, not what's too far, it, and the, I like uh, the hand motion. There it is. There it is. Look at that. Right there. Adam has done great work with that graphic. I want it's to beautiful every time. <laughs> every time. I'm blown away you by it right there. just let me know how he feels about that. Yeah. All right, my number seven. My number seven is Remy from Ratatouille, the rat. That, I, I tried. Really? I tried so hard to put it on. What? I tried so hard. Wow. There's okay. so many good options I know in you're animation. Right. You're right. You're right. So for me, it just for me, I just absolutely love Remy because I mean he's so it's Patton Oswald, by the way. Mm -hmm. So so great as in this voiceover role and so believable. And he's such a sweet character. And he's like, you know, dealing with the pressures from his dad and having yeah. to fit into the rat society. And then yeah, he, wants he wants to, to be Yeah, he wants to be a chef. He wants to be a cook. He wants to go against the grain. Yeah. And everybody else is like, no, you're you're from the trash. Right. Stay down here with us. It's easy picking. It's such like, a brilliant concept, yeah. isn't it? Like you take a rat that wants to be a high-end chef. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like ridiculous, but it works because your idea of what rats are, there's no way they could know the nuances of food and the spices and what have you because well, they're eating in the trash. Yeah, but at the same time, when it's one rat by itself, yeah. it's kind of cute. You know what I mean? Sure. Oh, right, look at him. Exactly. He's harmless. He's on his own. Totally. But rats don't do that. No. So that's the reason we all hate rats. <laughs> You know, if they were solitary creatures, it's like an amped up mouse. Right. Just go your own way. You know, get out of here. I won't kill you kind of thing. As long as you don't do me any damage. Exactly. It's fine. But it's still unsettling in the film when you see that he goes back to see his family of rats. Yeah. I'm still and when like, they flood. Yeah, I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's really when cute. When they're at when the he's... older woman, I think it is in the beginning part of the movie. Yeah, and yeah. it opens up and like there's like 5,000. You're like, oh, <laughs> like, I'm going to throw up in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right now, because I've never seen rats just caught. They all freeze like that. And they're right. looking and they just scatter. Like, oh, if I saw that in life, I, you know, I'm not afraid of rats, but oh, I am. It's got to be like the Last Crusade when they're barreling down on him right. when he's underneath the catacombs in Venice. Right. Oh. It's unsettling. Yeah. The stuff they do with him too, the way he's manipulating. Uh, I forget the the character's name. He's manipulating his hair to make turn yeah. him to cook and make him fall in love. All that kind of jazz. It's just such a brilliant character, and I think Patton does a great job of bringing the vulnerability and also the humor. But the humor, once again, human humor. Not over the top, not trying to be attention grabbing. It's very, it fits within mm -hmm. the scope of the film, and I think it works so well. So that when he has that final with his dad, I think his voice by Martin Landau has that uh, kind of come together with his dad. Okay. Uh, it's real. It's it's earned. Yeah. And it's believable, and you feel it if you've ever had your own interactions with your father like that, where you're trying to convince him that you want to pursue something other than what he thinks. Yeah, you against do. the grain, he yeah. had other aspirations and goals for you, and he exactly. wanted. He's just worried about your future. Yeah, and you may need to make him feel okay that your future is fine. Yeah, that you got that, it handled. Yeah, that's all you got to do. I'm a rat. I got it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So my number six uh, is um, uh, the punt from earlier, Mr. Fox from Fantastic Mr. Fox, uh, 2009 movie. Wes mm -hmm. Anderson directed it. What a fantastic yeah, film. Yeah, and you can tell yeah. Wes Anderson directed it. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. You take it to a completely other medium. Right. And you're like, that. it's clearly a Wes Anderson film. You don't even have to think twice about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 say, you got style at that point. You, really you definitely do. have taste. Right. And there's no big deal made about it like they do with Tim Burton films. Like, it's, oh, he went frame by frame, day by day, hours. When, he just did it. Yeah. That was it. There's no need to make a huge deal about it. Wes Anderson just decided to do an animated film, and it worked. The stop motion. I think my favorite part of it, though, was the stop motion was the fact that it wasn't fluid as they walked yes. around. So it was kind of slightly herky jerky, yeah. and it—I don't know—it added to the overall like Agreed. quirkiness of it. Yeah. 
Like it was something different come to life. It kind of walked that line between human and animation, like real life okay. and animation in a way that was believable, even though you could see like the winds in their fur, in their fake fur. Oh yeah, and it, it just moves great. in clumps. And, yeah, yeah, it was so great that it made it feel kind of, it just, there was something unique. Yeah. And it was fun. And George Clooney, the voiceover work he does for this is just so great and it works and the design of the fox is so great yeah. from the tie yeah, and the, the, the short sleeve shirt. Clooney's the voice. Yeah. Is so good. Yeah. You can see why. Like, there's so much charm. He's got so much confidence at this point yeah. that he literally just gets to watch around and be like, "I'm George Clooney." Yeah, he's and that's all he's got to do. That gives him free access to wherever he wants. Right. I bet you a comped meal as long as it's below a certain threshold at any restaurant in the entire world. George Clooney. Yeah. If he walked in, they recognize him and uh, be like, "Hey, you know, give me a hundred dollars worth of food." They'd be like, would, "No problem." I would imagine a comp meal anywhere. It did irrelevant yeah. price. It's no, George saying, Clooney. Like, he's hey, eating in your restaurant. He might not carry as much sway with certain. If he went oh. to every restaurant, eventually there's going to be someone that doesn't care. Right. He might be able to. Still get hundred bucks and then get some pictures out of it or something. I don't know. You never know. You don't know. But you can feel the confidence of that guy. Yeah. I conceive that it's possible for him. Yeah. It's a rarefied air in my world. And he does a great job. Like they do a great job in the film of showing him uh, uh, bouncing off and talking to the different people, like Meryl Streep yeah. and uh, all Bill the voice Murray, over. all the voices. Yeah, all of them and the kid, Jason Schwartzman. Jason Schwartzman. Yeah, Schwartzman rather. Yeah, all that great stuff they do. And he does such a great job through the beginning because you because he's he's a scoundrel. He's a fox. He's yep. going to be a scoundrel. And so at it's, the but, end, especially the interactions with his wife. Yeah. He wants to have heart, and she's yeah. trying to make him better but ultimately she knows she can't change his nature or right. she can just try and hopefully like eh, slow him down a little i think one of my favorite moments of the film is when he has the confrontation with the rat there's this understanding that they are who they are and yeah. they have assigned roles in this in this ecological system and they accept it at the end when he dies there's the acceptance uh, of almost respect and honor between them when he's passing away which well, is awesome honor among thieves yeah exactly <laughs> so <laughs> they band together all right let's start our top five uh matt what do you have at number five my number is cinco Yes, that's very well said. Is Rango. Did it make your list? It didn't. It was on there I, at nine or ten, and I was like, I love this. <sighs> this I couldn't is, put it together, but this is this one is of the great few choice. from adulthood yeah. that I will watch this movie for the rest of my life. I bought it immediately after I went after it's it came out on Blu-ray. Fantastic. It is yeah. an amazing idea from start to finish, yes. from concept to execution. The yeah. entire like it was by, you know. Uh, Depp and the director from mm -hmm. uh, was it the first Pirates? Yeah, and they were hashed it. Gore Verbinski. Yeah, yep. they hashed it out on set. Yep, and then th that came to life, and you're like, God, that was excellent, great right. job, guys. My hats off to you, just to be you know shooting the breeze on set. Yeah, and then to come up with something that's so so beautiful in its final you know completion. Yeah, you could argue this is their second best collaboration behind the Pirates of the Caribbean, the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie, not the second or the third. I don't know. Or this might be rewatchable for me over the long haul. More than the first Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean movie, because wow, I know the, awesome. of the baggage that comes after. So yeah, sure. It depreciates my love of it just a little bit. Yeah, to know where they've gone and they just kind of churned it out. It's like a modern day you know Stallone. Yeah kind of series eventually it's just like hey, you know what guys we're still punching yeah, you know yeah. we're still we're trying uh, I, I really wanted to put it on my list it was a struggle because i love this movie so much just like you do matt yeah. and and johnny depp's performance it's johnny it's Depp never does voiceover it's brilliant and it's so fantastic to see what he's do, what he does with that yeah to play a chameleon playing an actor that lands up in this town and now as an actor he has to play a part and he exactly. <laughs> just because he comes in with so much confidence of selling it initially they yeah. buy it so he just keeps rolling with it yeah and then it's the conflict of that of who am i really i got to keep acting this part or yeah. you know do what i do i've been doing that at collider since i started so yeah that's true <laughs> cool. congratulations that's <laughs> right they haven't found me out yet they haven't found me out yet apparently your secret is a red shirt is oh, what i mean yeah, that's what i just be able to keep saying <laughs> the red shirt guy i've heard that now three times it's better than fat guy with glasses what i which i get occasionally <laughs> which i i really hate i really hate that one let me uh, just put that out oh, there for anyone who's commenting just, but the, the look in your eye of like, I would punch whoever that was just for the, you know, sheer, sheerly saying it. It was great. As really, well, you should. If I didn't have to go to jail, I really would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Damn these societal standards. You know what I mean? Law and order. There was Keep a time. Roca down. Yeah, that's what I'm Otherwise, saying. you could be like Chuck Norris and just go on Roadhouse across the country. Oh, red line Roca. <gasps> All right. Um, so then, uh, let's see. My number five is a bit of a cheat. Okay. Uh, it's Timon and Pumbaa from The Lion King. All right. I yeah. couldn't separate. Another tough omission. I'll give it to yeah. you. Yeah, if yeah. they were making it on, they're both making it yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You can't separate them. And and everyone in The Lion King, I know Scar's great. I know Jeremy Irons is fantastic as portrayal James Earl Jones, obviously, and Matthew Broderick. But for me, 
what happens here with these two actors is just fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Nathan, uh, 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 oh my God, why am I forgetting his name? Nathan Lane, and I forget the other actor's name, but I, he's a character actor, and I've seen him in numerous, numerous things, including Saved by the Bell, the summer season. Uh, <laughs> and he, he played Leah Remini's dad. Leah, is that Leah Remini? Yeah, Leah Remini's dad. I feel dad. like you just won points to a competition I didn't know we were in. No, I, <laughs> right? Know? Like there's a secret tally somewhere. It's like those guys are marking the time. You're like Roka just <laughs> jocked one up. I'm like, Saved by the bell. He did I it. Don't even know. Quarter to Roka. What? I'm waiting for like people to scream. Like that was the secret word. That was a great poll. Yeah, Pee Wee Herman reference. Nice. It was a great poll. Uh, anyway, I just I just love them in the film. They're so they make the film so enjoyable. The 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 ball busting they do with each other. The frustration they get with it's just two guys. Yeah. Like it's basically we've seen this since Kurosawa did it in the Hidden well, Fortress. We see it in Star Wars. The it gives two a soft mismatched edge people. to yeah. an otherwise very hard edged movie. Exactly. So exactly. they have to have some sort of comedy element or something to liven it up and give it a little brevity. Otherwise, yeah. this thing's just browbeating kids for right ninety minutes. It's like a depressing death. All oh, the whole yeah. film. You know, I just heard over. about some song number that they took out that would explain how uh, his uh, ultimate wife, you know, the, the um, Simba and the girl, I can't remember yeah. her name right now. Yeah. What's that? Nala. Nala. Thank you. Or Thanks. Nala. Uh, when she comes back, there's a little song to explain why she left and is kind of out in the world now. Nope. And it's just like, wow, that was bad news. I'm glad you guys cut that because <laughs> kids would have been like, what's going on? <laughs> Mom, why am I depressed? It's real, like, it gets in a Disney super film. dark. You're like, I can't believe Disney even storyboarded this idea. You could find it. I don't know if I should bring it up right here because it's yeah. kind of well, dark. Well, we lost Disney as a sponsor. Thanks for, thanks <laughs> yeah. for watching, everyone. So. I'm not impugning the work. I think it makes a much more interesting film. There's I will give you that. It's a little bit I would watch it as an adult just a little bit more. Right. But, <laughs> but anyway, what I was saying was yeah. these two guys are pretty great in the film. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed the film because of their interaction. I enjoyed it all the more, and it's great because they have their own kind of like uh, uh, journey that they have to go on uh, yeah. with the Lion King himself and going through all that process of being friends. And then they, because he, they're the first two friends that help him through. Because that's what happens, you know, when you lose a family member. Sometimes your friends are the ones more than your family that can pick you up, and and they yeah. really do pick help him, well, like get back on top, get, find his strength again, and have this courage. Did you again. choose your friends? Yes, exactly. So, exactly. and sometimes in those moments, you find out your friends can reciprocate the need that you yeah. have. Yeah. And you're like, that's a true friend. Somebody can help yeah. me in those moments when you genuinely need one. You yeah. know? Uh, that's when you find out, like, hey, this person was willing to come pick me up at three in the morning and didn't that's even right. hesitate. Or I remember once I got a flight delayed from LAX down to John Wayne. Yeah. And I had a friend who was like, no problem. It yeah. was like, oh, thank God. Because yeah. otherwise, I had no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. When, when, my, when my father passed, my friend Sarah bought a ticket, a plane ticket for my girlfriend at the time to fly her to surprise yeah. me for the wake so that she could nurse me through the, the weekend of my father's that's a funeral. Friend. That was amazing. Yeah, that's I didn't a friend. see that come. She bought her a hotel room. She got everything for her. And I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. So she was really awesome at the, to do that. So yeah, friends do that in those moments. And that's, that's what you see with Timon and Pumbaa. All right, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is Donkey from Shrek. Okay, that's my number three. Let's talk about it. All right, it. I figured it was going to be higher for you, actually. In my head, I was like, I bet you there's going to be a two for him. No, it wasn't. So, <laughs> so let's talk. Thank about you, it. Shatner. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't uh, uh, great choice. Yeah, right. This Eddie Murphy is my favorite part of those movies. Yes, he steals every scene so effortlessly. You yeah. can just hear the joy of I'm making twenty million dollars to work two days. <laughs> twenty million. I come in, I bang out two eight-hour days. I just made twenty million. <laughs> what do you want me to do, guys? I'm selling whatever, whatever you like. Just hand me the script. <laughs> And I, I love it. It's one of the He's best so voiceover. Good. I did not expect Eddie Murphy to be that amazing yeah, yeah. at voiceover work. And you're like, God, why does he get more work? Yeah. It's just impressive every time to see it. Well, he did the dragon in Mulan, and that was great yeah, stuff. Yeah, he was the best part of Mulan. Yeah. And then you have this kind of situation. Well, well I don't know about that. Donnie Osmond, he did a nice job. But uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I liked the other characters. <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> for my favorite one, it's clearly him. <laughs> totally. And in the Shrek films, I think he makes the Shrek films watchable. He makes the Shrek films. Not, not that they're not, but like he brings an element of humor and fun and mm -hmm. playful and challenging. He challenges you. There are moments when you're watching the film, you're like, Donkey, will you just shut up? But you need, that's the kind of thing of working well with others is for the positives you've got to deal with a little bit of the negatives or the flaws and that's about their relationship and their friendship and he exposes that because he pushes Shrek to do things that Shrek doesn't want to do he pushes him out of his comfort zone he pushes him to do these things because he has a purity yeah. and Eddie Murphy's performance as this character this pure character that just wants to uh, there's no like hidden agenda with him there's no, no ulterior he, motive he just wants a friend yeah and he, he literally and he like best for his friend he could pop up and have like gothic like I ride for you I die for you because he 
has that type of attitude towards Shrek. Just like, you can't get rid of me. Oh my God, please put We that might in as the next well movie. just accept the fact that yeah. we're together and this is happening. So, you know, deal with it, my friend. I want a Vato donkey. Uh, yeah, but like the, 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 right across his belly. Just, <laughs> ride and die in the calligraphy. Perfect. I ride for you, I die for you. Now it's like some broke WWE yeah. catchphrase. We're going to get killed now. All right, yes, go ahead. <laughs> really? You think for that one? <laughs> I think it'll be for the omissions or something like that, or we didn't have something on high enough list. Oh, my God, wouldn't that be terrible? Yeah, so, and and what did you, what do you think, like, what do you think he brings to the movies to, for you that makes it even more enjoyable to have him there? Like, well, look, than, if you subtract him, I don't watch those movies. Yeah, that's, that's a all great there is point, to it. Matt. Yeah. Some of the other characters on here, like it still survives because the other characters within the film are yeah. so amazing. Yeah. I just happen to love this one the most. Yeah. Within that, like he is the most rewatchable. I'm glad they didn't give him a spinoff because I don't think he carries a whole movie. No. He works better in these. Plus, right. now you're asking Eddie to do like six days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Eddie's not going to do two. six days. <laughs> yeah. No, he's got stuff and to He's do. got a contract. <laughs> I do VO once a year, two days at a time. Uh, we don't know that's true. We're not. We can't verify yeah, that truth. I don't. But if guessing. you do, congratulations. I don't want Eddie getting mad at yeah, us too. I'd like to shake your hand for it. I'd like to have Eddie on the show at some point. Uh, but with <laughs> who says no to that? You say that like I say no to that. No, I'm just. Please. Saying, I don't want to go. If you're out there, Eddie, you're watching. We'd love to have you. That's so, right. I don't want to go and say, man. I heard what you say about you being didn't a do SNL until years later. That's but true. You can come to us if you count what he did doing it. Yeah. Uh, what was so? What's also great? You're gonna take a shot after? No, I'm not. Dude, <laughs> did I say we I just, just go through that whole spiel of loving Eddie Murphy and <laughs> right at the end? This is a man, Scorpion and Frog. Right man. at the end, Scorpion. You just, you, <laughs> it's my nature. It's you my cut nature. Him it's my right nature. in the back. It's oh my man, nature. that is beautiful. Uh, sometimes I hate that my East beautiful. Coast, my East Coast upbringing. It's my nature. Oh man. Um, the other thing about what he does with Donkey um, is he works so well with the other characters, and like he's almost like with what wrestling call they put someone over. They, whenever they pull, bring a, bring a new character. I think it's always tested with how he interacts with Eddie on, yeah. uh, on as a character. Now I don't know that they're on like some behind the scenes. You see, sometimes behind the scenes they will work in the same booth. Sometimes they don't. But I th I've seen behind the scenes where Eddie's working with other people in the booth, so they're playing off each other, and that's great. And you can I, hear it anytime like you hear stories from animation yeah. where they're all sitting in a room. Like I know the Batman animated series, yes. they try to do it as much as possible where they're all in a room. Yeah, and you're kind of reacting, and uh, like Mark Hamill had to stand up to do Joker to yeah. get like the full power of the character and stuff like that. That, like that's a you're you're living in the moment yeah. so you can react and actually it comes through in the character's voice yeah. and it seems more natural on you know on film it's true for the the, the animation voiceover projects that i've done if i'm in the room with the other actors it's so much more fluid and easier because you're you're playing off their reaction to your lines or you're reacting to their lines yeah. how they delivered them when you're by yourself in the booth you're guessing and i think with eddie you can see that he he might even get playback if they're not in the same booth of what they did when they auditioned so yeah, he I'm can sure. play off what they're doing and it's great that's a great actor had the only VO I've ever done. <laughs> it was just me in a booth. There was nobody in front of me. The engineer yeah. was in a separate one. Yeah. And it just hear disembodied like bodied voice of, can you yeah. say that again? Say it like this. You have to check in with a director on right. like the phone or something and then come back and you're like, oh. Like, uh, Matt, I, I, can I you know. hold please? I, I like this. I like this. <laughs> I, I like this. <laughs> I oh, like yeah. this. Oh yeah, I did just, a commercial. You get to be like this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did a commercial campaign Literally, I had to say three lines, four hours, just sitting there saying the three just, lines over and over and over yeah. again. Uh, yeah, because they were like, we have to figure out, we have to communicate with the people in New York and the people in LA, people in London, to see how they want. And it was just madness. And I, I, went, I almost quit that day. I was like, never, I don't never you. again, never again, voiceover. Uh, anyway, enough of that uh, tangent. What do you got it for? Mine or four is Kermit the Frog from okay. the Muppets movie. Punt from earlier. From me. Oh, yeah. What number was yours again? Six. Six. All right. Close yes. enough. Close enough. Yeah, very much so. Kermit the Frog. I mean, I know, is there I a had more him iconic character? On my initial list, I had him higher, and then I started reordering th yeah, things a little yeah, bit, yeah, but yeah. it's just like, it's Kermit. Yeah. It's Kermit. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say beyond that. Like, well, he's such an endearing, lovable mm -hmm, character, mm -hmm. and his heart, like, even as an adult and as a kid, you just... Every time he's wounded, you feel wounded yeah. because you just identify with this character, or at least you want to. You yeah. feel compelled to because mm -hmm. it just seems like an altruistically good person. Yeah, and for me, that that Muppet movie, and this is what I base it on, the Muppet movie, because he uh, the other movies are in and out, but to me, that's the one, the Muppet movie in 1979, Jim Henson. Great stuff, great work by, uh, by Kermit, and you get like... 
Jim Henson doing obviously Jim Henson doing the voice, and he's the only voice I accept as Kermit. I know that his son has done it. I know other people have done it. Jim Henson is the voice, and I love that Jim Henson does the voice. That's the one that connected with me as a child. Yeah. So it'll always be my favorite voice. And so when I see the Muppet Movie, which is still eminently rewatchable, still a fun time. The songs still the new, work. The new ones are good. Yeah. I'm surprised by how often because I've watched the last two. Yeah. They actually managed to write in some great jokes. Yes. That will work for a kid, but yeah. works for an adult as well. And that's mm-hmm. tough to do with puppets. Yeah. Yeah. Something where the audience actually buys in and is invested in the characters in the moment that they want the joke to succeed. So they yeah. will laugh as long as you give them something of quality. Yeah. And they still manage to deliver. They walk that fine line. I mean, they're obviously geared more towards kids. Right. But they still do enough for adults that it's engaging and endearing. You catch all the emotional range that they're trying to convey. Right. And it's an interesting history of the Muppets because they started out, I think, on SNL for a year on SNL. And okay. they were older, more mature Muppets making these harder jokes. And so then they went kids' route because, because you know, because they were involved with Sesame puppets. Street and all like and their puppets, <laughs> yeah. right? Exactly. And they did all that jazz. And then they the TV show that came on ABC for a couple of seasons that just got canceled, they went back to being the more mature adult type Muppets. And it didn't quite work because they couldn't find that balance. They were trying to appeal to kids and adults, but couldn't quite find that right balance to make it a little more connectable in that yeah. way. I just I don't know the demographics of what kids are watching. That yeah. would be in, you know, in the age range that it's really effective for Muppets yeah. Yeah. that are up at eight o'clock. That's a good point. 8 p.m. Yeah, right, whatever sure. time it aired. But I assume it's the first on their prime time slot that yeah, night. Yeah, they're probably like watching us on YouTube. That's probably watching us on YouTube. Uh, and one, and I, I just think that I just love the relationship he has with Miss Piggy, the the relationship he has with Fozzie, like all these things that now, the character does are just great. To, my favorite character okay. in Muppets okay. is okay. probably Animal, but that doesn't really count, right? Because all speak. he says is Animal, yeah, and then he just bangs around. And right, it's great. I loved him as a kid. I totally love him as an adult because wow. it's just like that's what that character does. Yeah, just yeah. let him do what he does. But you you have to have a character like Kermit to anchor that whole yeah, show, the right? Because they all around. right, exactly. Like Gonzo is one of the more normal ones, and it has a weird thing for chickens. Yeah. <laughs> It's it really just does. never really explained in all of Muppetdom. Hey, hey, we just, all got our things. We he's all got our things. there all around, and I don't know what animal he's supposed to be. I've never understood. Who? Gonzo. Gonzo. I don't know what animal that is either. That's I, why I couldn't what, put him on my list. What like what animal what in nature looks like that as a hot dog for a nose? That's a, uh, it's like a curled hot dog. Yeah. It, well, yeah, it's like a, a Cheeto that's purple. Yeah, a Cheeto that's purple. Or not a Cheeto, but those half, you know what I mean? The, the super orangey ones you pull out, they're puffy. Sure. The puffs. Guys, cheese the puffs, puffs. Thank you. Cheese puffs. I yeah. looked at the back and they're just nodding their heads. <laughs> thank you. I turned to you, the they audience, for a little help, puffs. and I just get two head nods. Cody can't afford cheese puffs. Come oh. on, man. Uh, Maybe Broadway right. is out. <laughs> <laughs> that is a joke for her. off air. It's an inside joke. All yeah. Right. So that was my number. That was my number four. Yeah. So what's your number three? My number three is a pun from earlier, which is okay. blue. Okay. Let's talk about it. Is you know the bare I, necessities. I've, exactly. Of life. Simple bare necessities. <laughs> Forget about your <laughs> worries and, and your open. strife. No strife. Yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. Mm-hmm. It's in the argument for my favorite Disney movie. Wow. I saw it at the most impressionable age, whatever that was. I have yeah. no idea, four or five. Sure, sure. Something like that. And I've watched it every year, at least I'd say twice a year Yeah. since then. It's one of my favorite movies. And uh, I don't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm forever 10 years old on some level. Yeah. And that still appeals to me. I'll never grow up <laughs> as a child. I always love now, like looking back, when he spins in to do the song and dance number yeah. with King Louis, that he just puts on the skirt and he's got the coconuts and like a, uh, mm-hmm. the, some sort of husk or something for yeah. hair. And all the other monkeys and apes are just like, that looks legit. Yeah. Like as an adult. I'm like, going to accept that. You all grow up around each other. There's no other orangutan that is this huge. Yeah. Just parading around and everybody <laughs> just accepts. When we broke into a song and dance number, this big orangutan we've never seen just yeah. showed up. Yeah. I love watching that now as an adult and just spin around. It was like, yeah, why not? Let's go with it. Let's yeah. go. Just dance around. I was a big fan of it too. I think below, I mean, obviously not high enough on my list, but it it's just it's it's one of those I I was not always the biggest fan of the movie. So that's where we differ. But I enjoy the character of Baloo. And I think because I don't enjoy the movie as much, it kind of it's why I pushed him a little further down. Uh, but it's it's not, it's not, you know, it's just all perspective, you See, know. For me, I love it because as a kid I loved it for one reason. Yeah. Like at the end, I loved the entire journey. And when Baloo was basically like, you have to go. Yeah. And it's that heartfelt moment, I sided 
with Mowgli, and yeah. I wanted him to stay. I wanted to live in the forest with yeah. this great life. And now as an adult looking back, it's like, you have to go. Yeah, you have to grow up. And now I appreciate that movie entirely anew mm -hmm. for the message it's trying to send. Right. So it, it, it just hit me in a sweet spot of I was dumb enough to fall for the charm, I guess, <laughs> and no. still love the charm. I'm just saying A lot of people kid, love this film. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's certainly a, a hole in my resume that I don't love it as much as everyone else. But that's it's, it's, it's all a perspective of when movies hit you. I love Pinocchio. Pinocchio is almost my top one. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Uh, that is the thing. <laughs> that is the thing. <laughs> that is the thing. <laughs> you were an old school like East Coast Jewish mother there that's for half a second. Uh, so so what is it? My number three was Donkey with yeah. Shrek. So what's your number two? So my number two, two yes. is Roger Rabbit. Oh! Is that on your list? Crap, it's not on my list. <laughs> oh, oh, buddy. No, there's a reason it's not on my list. Go ahead. Yes, I remember now. Why is that? I just no. Please, you tell your side of the story. <laughs> well, for a second there, you were pissed at the omission, and then you I came was. up with the one thing that would yes. crystallize it. Yes. So I would like to know what was that one, the catalyst, as it were. He's kind of annoying, and so I don't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to put him on the list. I like Jessica Rabbit more. I like Bob Hoskins more. Uh, this uh, is the truth. He's an annoying little rabbit, and so uh, I don't. I don't I revere him as much as everybody else. But I love you. the film. I love the film. But he's an annoying uh, yeah. bastard. I, you know, yeah, it, uh, if that character grates on you, then it definitely grates on yeah. you. I, I love it. I can see where it, like, it's one of those, it's a 50-50. You either love it or you hate it. And if you right. hate it, this is going to be a long movie. Yeah. Uh, it's so good, though. And I love No, it's that. a good movie. I, he he needs to be that way. Like it kind of lulls Eddie into his world, yeah. and ultimately it endears Eddie to him, yeah. and he helps him resolve the problem. And it's a phenomenal movie throughout. And yes, the fact that they agreed. took all the care to paint in mm -hmm. on every cell, and like I love reading the stories over the years that Hoskin had to keep his hands closed anytime he was doing anything where they'd be out in front, yeah. because otherwise they have to animate in between, and that yeah. cost five thousand dollars or something extra per second. Right, right. So hey, do this, dummy. <laughs> You're saving us a lot of money. <laughs> but it's like all the, over and over, and I watched the behind the scenes of. Uh, at one point, there's a weasel in a, a dish sink. Yeah. They're trying to hide. When it yeah. comes out, it spits water, and they showed how they did that. And yeah. Just like, God, this must have taken forever, and it really translates, uh, for me at least. It does. Uh, within the, the character. For me, I love the film because of everything else with him. And you're right. He sure. works within the movie. He has to be that way. You know, please, Eddie, all that stuff. It just, it just at, at some point, it gets to the point for me uh, that, I, that I stop caring for the character, and I care more for Toontown, and I care more for okay. Bob Hoskins' resolution I mean, with, with Joanna Cassidy, I think it is, and then, and then Jessica Rabbit, Jessica Rabbit figuring things out, you know, and all that kind of jazz. Yeah, but all this... I yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, the things I'm, that are conjuring to mind right now are some of the other, like, uh, when the revolver and they go to put the bullets yeah. in, and the bullets are all yeah, different. Yeah, the around, yeah. Just like it's such a stupid little detail, yeah. but if we are in a cartoon world, yeah, why wouldn't would this be a cartoon? Exactly. They're all characters. Yeah. Uh, even the bridges, the sun, the mm -hmm. clouds, like everything is a character here. I think with how great Roger Rabbit is, though, if you're going to pick someone from that movie, it's Roger Rabbit. You know what I'm saying? You, you, it's Jessica Rabbit is very tempting to choose, oh, but yeah. she's so human-like that it's not... It doesn't yeah. quite work. She's you somewhat human-like. Yeah, there are okay. Proportionalities that oh, I don't well, think sure. be replicated. But I mean, like, body-wise and facial-wise, it seems very human as opposed to animalistic, and so for me, I couldn't even consider putting it on my list. But everybody loves Jessica Rabbit as a character. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, but... For numerous I, reasons. But even the actors within it, they were such great casting. Yeah. Such great casting. Do you want to do that again when, <laughs> instead of, when it's not a two-shot of us? I like the face, too. <laughs> I like the face. Please. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's enough about Roger Rabbit. What, <laughs> what do you got it to? That seems like just as good a spot as any to wrap up that discussion. Right. You're welcome. My number two is uh, Dory from Finding Nemo and Finding okay. Dory. I... I what? don't have a favorite in that movie. Wow. I like them all equally because I think it overall services the story. Really? I love that movie. It's okay, yeah, of course. In my top we've, five, yeah, we've talked Pixar. About mm -hmm. I just don't know. I, I, but I love Albert Brooks's you know, voiceover Marlin, yeah. maybe a little bit more because wow. you can feel the emotional connection to the character. Right. It's nothing against her. It's just like, right. maybe I like... And I actually love the aquarium scenes. Yeah. There's so many great... You know, casting choices yeah, yeah. there. You're great. I, I agree with you there. I think for me, it's it's that the fact that I've seen Albert Brooks play this kind of schleppy guy before, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't. I've never seen this from Ellen, and I think the fact, and even seeing Finding Dory last night, really cemented the, her on my list in that because to me, I find her portrayal of Dory so interesting, so layered, so fun, and so because she just. 
just believes what she believes. She understands that she has a she has a she's fault. She's fully a deficiency. in the moment. Yeah, she's fully in the moment. Lives in the a moment. A thousand percent. Yeah, and it you see that with and it's what drives the 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 narrative of the film. It drives the film. Without Dory, there's no way Marlon's going. There's no way Marlon has any clue where his son is. Well, he would have been and defeated. Exactly. He'd have been done, and he'd been sitting there like we see with Dory's parents and finding Dory. Well, I don't want to give her too much away. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that kind of thing we see them possibly worried about, and so he would have never gotten off the reef. He would have never gone over the thing. He'd have flipped out, flipped out, but he. He he wouldn't know how. And I think that's why Dory, to me, has the edge over Marlon because she drives the film. She she is the well, fun of the film. She also, because mm -hmm. of the chaotic nature of her life, he wants everything yeah. so structured and ordered yeah. and, you know, Nemo goes to school from here to here and yeah. I, I take him from there. Otherwise, right. he's hanging out in the sea anemone right. and he is used to the structured world and he allows... Uh, she allows him to basically relax on that and understand right. that the world is chaos and you right. can't control everything else. It's just impossible. Yeah, once again, she's pushing him out. Yeah. To so me, like, I'm a big fan of characters that push them out you of could, You could tell me on Crush later on because that is such a fun character oh, and uh, it steals that little chunk of the movie. The, the turtle. turtle. Yeah. Uh, so when they come cool in, but stuff. there's no way Marlon gets to accepting Turtle without right. Dory pushing him and just going, hey, exactly. you know what? Eventually, you do have to go with the flow. It's yeah. okay. And, It'll be fine. And she's a great character who always sees the good in every mm -hmm. every character she gets in, involved it's, in. And it's brilliant. The whale speak is just brilliant stuff. I know. It's, it's a one-note so character that they managed to to get two movies out of yeah, successfully. Yeah. But with but with I, I don't know if I agree 100% that's a one-note well, character, I'm saying but it's, I think in lesser hands? Yeah. Oh, it right. would it would it would be a one-note character yeah. and you would hate it and I can't believe it's getting a spin-off and right. this thing that I, it wasn't mar you know, may, pardon me, maybe marginally successful the first time. Yeah. But they're it's so incredible they find inventive new ways for her to forget things. Yeah. Yeah. And it just compels the story further. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's impressive. And they do great work. And at the, at the time when Ellen De DeGeneres was doing this uh, film, she had just, the TV show had just gotten canceled. She had just come out uh, as gay. One of the, people don't remember this, like in the mid 90s, people forget, I think, like she was the first out gay actor, actress. Uh, of working. her stature, yeah, yeah. Of her stature working. She had her own show, and so she had lost her show. She was she was like tumbling down, and then she did this stand up on HBO, which really revitalized her. And then Finding Nemo came after, right after, and it was a one two punch that turned her career completely around. And we have the Ellen DeGeneres we see now, uh, and I think that's I give it that much more credit for that too. Somehow people accept her better in early afternoon. I have no well, idea. I don't know, but I think I think people saw people got past that stuff and they saw a person yeah, that they enjoyed, humor they enjoyed, an actress that they enjoyed, and I think that saved her career. And I think that is what drives her in this part. Like there's a real hunger, a real desire to do the right thing, to do it as well as possible. And it radiates with her voiceover work in the part. That's my that's my personal opinion. Anyway, all right. All right, so my number one. Yes. Are you ready for a fight? Sure. Because this is gonna be fun. Okay, because it's I, the only one you uh, made an example of when you said you know, characters <laughs> like this. All right, go ahead. Which is Bugs Bunny. What? How oh, does Bugs Bunny not even in a movie? Bugs Bunny. He's not even in a movie. You must have put Mickey Mouse on there then. Space Jam gives me the technicality mm. <laughs> to back end my way into. Look, those short films from Mary Melodies. Oh, those are great. They won three Oscars for get, best short, short films. Short so you're not telling me those are films? Mm, they won three I Oscars. Right. I guess all right. In the technical and, term, yes. And in like the, the what is it, the National Film Board or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, They've canonized a few of the Merry Melodies saying right. this is part of our culture. This is important. We well, need Mary to remember Melodies this. are... It's the overall, like, right. it's Bugs, it's Daffy, it's Elmer Fudd. To me, it's, it's always like Looney Tunes. That's what I think of when I think of Bugs. So Merry Melodies is, pro is part it's of the it earlier at the beginning. Stuff. Right, exactly. Yeah. When he was a little more like... All, he your, a belly. all your favorites, like the, the opera stuff. Yeah. Like, it was Merry Melodies. And yeah. then like... Uh, with the big red-headed monster and the mad scientist yes. and they're running oh, around with the ether. Dracula. With the yeah. ether. With the brilliant. ether. Brilliant. And like they shave that thing down. Yeah. And uh, there's so many of those like when he's got the opera singer on the glove. Yeah. Just doing that and he walks away and the cummerbund is bursting and all those I grew up just watch back yeah. to back to back. So I am back ending that calling okay. that since they're films yeah. I love me some Bugs Bunny. All right. That's why I, I really wanted to put Daffy Duck on here as well and it's like I'm not going to do it. I'm like, I can't have two battles. I can't have, I can't wage a two front war. Yeah. I need to pick my battle and I'm picking this one. I'm going to go with Bugs Bunny. That's fair. I don't, I don't, I, I, you know, I love Bugs Bunny to pieces. The Looney Tunes, I still watch those whenever, the, whenever the old I've ones come on. I've searched them out on YouTube and yep. you can find anyone you want to for the most part. Yeah. Well, they go released, back. They released them as a golden collection. So you can, there's like four or five volumes of them, like com compilation, three, oh, yeah. three CD compilations. Per and younger volume. viewers out there, if you haven't seen it, you've yeah. only seen Space Jam or something like that. Trust me, the best Bugs Bunny is from what? The 40s, 50s? 40s and 50s. Yeah. Mel Easily. Blanc. 
Just in, manages to engage kids using yep. opera music. Yeah. And it's fantastic. They're more into those cartoons. Well, I don't know. A lot of animated series today are actually very intelligent, and they push kids to learn more. But those but cartoons at that time is all we had. Is like, all we had. All the like the reason I want to put Daffy Duck on is the sequences yeah. he would have where he's fighting with the illustrator. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where it's just like, oh, and he pisses him off. He takes the eraser and takes off his bill. And right. now he's just sitting there, like, and he can't do anything. And he draws him every which right. way. I, I love breaking that wall yep. of reality, what's real and what's not. Yeah, and Daffy, you could argue Daffy is the greatest foil of Bugs Bunny, aside from Yosemite Sam, aside from these other... Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, it's, it's Daffy Duck. He is the polar opposite of Bugs Bunny. Yeah, he's selfish. And in so many ways. He's egotistical. Yeah, yeah. He wants everything first. Like, he is the brat kid. Right. Like the only child whose parents would get him every toy he wanted as a kid yeah, and yeah. didn't know how to share. And you're like, you're just an asshole. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have every toy. How do you, how do you have like the aircraft carrier from G.I. Joe? I right. knew a kid that had that. Right. Like this is the most useless toy of all time. It's like 15 feet long, three and a half, four feet wide. And like, oh, you can land things on it. It's probably not 15 feet long. It's probably like 10 feet. But anyway, land things on it and then stand up and just like, this is the fun. But at the same time, you're envious. You're like, I, I wish I had this thing. <laughs> We've explored this, the uh, childhood issues of Matt Nose now at the G.I. Joe. Somebody sent him the G.I. Joe thing so he can oh, have it himself. No, it won't. No, unfortunately, like it's in the trash. I, I don't have anywhere to put it. I don't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> My house is small enough. Please do not send me that. Donate to a charity though, that won't appreciate there, it. Oh, there you go. It's yeah. a very sweet thing for you to no say. No problem. Look at something out of it. <laughs> well, um, so here's my number one. So this will be going to be an interesting fight. It's Jiminy Cricket from Pinocchio. Okay. That's an animal. I'm not going to fight Right, you. I'm just saying that's an animal. Uh, I looked it up. It's under <laughs> the Animalia Kingdom on Wikipedia, so it, just, Wikipedia tells the truth all the time. Science so match you up, and we're talking about talking animals. I mean, we can stretch a definition. If somebody out there is going to harangue us for that, yeah, that's true. And take us out you know, at the knees for that, well, <laughs> maybe this isn't the show for you. <laughs> well, don't say that. We're trying to get viewers. This is yeah. the show for you. This is the show for you. No, uh, Jimmy Cricket, to me, uh, as we were saying, we were referencing when we talked about Jungle Book, Pinocchio is my number one Disney film. It, it can't be touched. For me, it can't be touched. I love it two pieces for so many reasons. Uh, and Jimmy Cricket is such a fantastic character. Uh, and what it does through how the film, trying to guide him. You know, there's a version of the mouse in Dumbo. That's another version of Jiminy Cricket, right? But to me... Yeah, it's, a, it, yeah, it's not as powerful it's as not. Jiminy. And, and I'd like Jiminy for what he was, the design, the hat, the suit, the cane. But at the same time, the whole nine. I like Dumbo more than I like Pinocchio. Okay. I'll give you Jiminy Cricket on the right. one side, but on uh -huh. the other, like I still prefer Dumbo over, okay. I think. I'd have well, to go back and I haven't watched him probably like eight years or something. Yeah. All right. Peace. Well, that's fair. I mean, like I said, it's all perspective. It's all our own subjective opinion, yeah. right? For me, Pinocchio, like with Jungle Book, Pinocchio hit me at the right time in yeah. the formative years or whatever. I remember being, I think it's the first movie my mother took me to. And I just really, remember, yeah, I remember loving that film so much and walking out of it, but being also very unsettled by the donkey situation, unsettled by the whale, like all these things when you're a kid that you're like, oh, you're, you're riding the As wave. As an this adult. Nuts. Yeah, yeah, true. As an adult. The donkey Absolutely. thing on whatever, uh, basically Misfit Island. Yeah, yeah. Is horrifying. Right. And even as a kid, I was like, that's the part in the movie I was just kind of like cringe and yeah. tinge up and not understand right. that maybe I shouldn't be watching. This is a little horrific for like a six-year-old. <laughs> right. But there's something about the portrayal of the actor who did his voice. There's something about the progression of that character and how he's trying to help Pinocchio through all these situations. And he's he's not he's not being mean to him. He's trying to guide him, right? And there's a real kind of, not even fatherly, it's friendly type thing. Like, listen, just listen to me and we'll get through this thing. If you don't listen to me, yeah. these are the things that are happening to you and I love the fact that it does such a great job of exposing that situation of how frustrating that can be for someone who's in that position and then but then still you can feel the love every time he speaks to Pinocchio the, every time he tries to get Pinocchio to stop doing these you things can you can it feel it in the timbre of his voice yes yes the way he and just says it, it yeah it feels calm and reassuring yeah uh and that's why it's Monday morning. It will always be. It's just, just uh, whenever I see that character, uh, I absolutely uh, just go back to being a child again. Like that Ratatouille moment where he eats the food and he's immediately a five year old back in his house or whatever at the end of the movie. Like for me, that's that's what I enjoy about Jiminy Cricket, and that's why he's my number one because he just has this feeling. I just have this connection to it that is overwhelming to me as a yeah. number one. Yeah. Well, there it is. That well, was good. It's, there's so many. There's yeah. so many omissions. Yeah. Still. Like Mickey Mouse, I, I know. I couldn't put Mickey Mouse because he doesn't talk in Fantasia. And and, and within Disney on film, Mickey's yeah. not one of my favorites. Right. But at the same time, I love Mickey Mouse. I still go to Disneyland at least probably twice a year now. Right, right. Uh 
you know, as a 37 <laughs> year old man, that's there's a weird thing to say out loud. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, there's, there's not. Well, we live so close. It's yeah. 25, 30 minutes away. Totally. Easy to make it there. And right. I, I can, you know, I know people that work for Disney. Yeah. Not a problem. Get yeah. me in. I'll go <laughs> drop a couple hundred bucks there. <laughs> if we were talking TV, if we were talking characters on TV, like, Animal, they, Mickey Mouse would be number one. Just, just for the, for me and my, well, Bugs Bunny, I guess one and two, right? That would be yeah. the battle somewhere because, in there. I don't know, yeah, because I have different parts of my, yeah, um, brain that like different aspects. Yeah, and then we throw in Daffy Duck, and then the world just goes to hell. So, all right, so I know, but then there's Donald too, and you got Goofy, and oh, that's, that's, that's when Donald, you go down. I meant Donald. And yeah. I still love Pluto, even though Pluto no, doesn't even do that much. Yeah. And Chip and Dale he doesn't speak, and it just keeps going and going and going with Disney. Yeah. All right, well, let's, let's, uh, this, we come to the part of the show where we count down our top 10 lists. Uh, Matt, Adam, who's going first, Matt or me? Uh, Matt. All right, let's do Matt. Thank you, announcer Adam. My top 10 list is at number 10, Tigger. At number nine, Fantastic Mr. Fox. At number eight, Poe. At seven, Robin Hood. At six, Kermit. At five, Rango. Now, at number four is Donkey. At three, Baloo. Two is Roger Rabbit. And finally, at number one, we have Bugs Bunny. I still love that. Back you, to you, Adam. Yeah, <laughs> I still love that you that your picture is that trucker, angry trucker, rustler guy. I just love it. Blackjack no thick beard. Blackjack yeah. no. I don't know. I feel like that's look at that thing. <laughs> yeah, look at it. What's wrong, Matt? What's wrong? Uh, I've been in a lot of barroom fights on the losing end. Look <laughs> is that, at that guy. Is, is that a Road Warrior shirt? Is that what's his face from Road Warrior? No, it's a oh. uh, Cold Warrior, and it's got uh, Reagan's head over the Road Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> and him but still from it. I saw it online. And I was like, brilliant. oh, my God, I love that shirt. Oh, my gosh. And brilliant. It's just, yeah. I was like, I'm buying that. Shout out to that shirt. All yeah. right. Found it on eBay. All right. So my top 10, uh, if Adam could bring the graphic up. And my number 10 is, oh, look at that. No chins on that guy. I love it. All right. My I number miss 10, the other picture. No, of course you do. Here's my list. Yeah. Here's my four chins. All right. Number 10, Yago from Aladdin. Number nine, Poe from Kung Fu Panda. Number eight, Baloo from The Jungle Book. Seven, Remy from Ratatouille. Six, Mr. Fox from the Fantastic Mr. Fox, Timon and Pumbaa from The Lion King, Kermit the Frog from The Muppet Movie, Donkey from all the Shrek series, Dory from the two Finding Nemo, Finding Dory movies, and Jiminy Cricket from Pinocchio. All right, so here comes the time where we put our list together. Matt. All right. Since Jiminy Cricket was an actual film. This. All right, yeah. You, you... <laughs> You watch your tongue. I was about to. I was about to be the nice guy oh, here. Oh, thank you. And concede. All right. I'm sorry. But I'm Can not going to take these. Just you know, broadsides. Broad you're yeah, right. Yeah, my you're way. Right. All right. So now I'm fighting for bugs. Come on now. That? No, no, no. I was getting Come ready to on. go. You know what? I'll give you that. I give me okay. bugs at two. Roger at three. That and sounds you get good. Four Dory. That sounds good. I accept that. Bugs Bunny at two. Of course you do. And you what get what did you, you want. At number one. <laughs> what did you say? You get exactly what you want. You figure out what's on your list. I'll Roger out Rabbit. What's on mine. Roger Rabbit. All right. At number three. Hold on. We got to slow down. We got to oh, slow oh, down. Oh yeah. Yeah. We have to slow down. We're barreling through. All at right. number one. At number one. Jiminy Cricket. It's Jiminy Cricket from Pinocchio. No problem. Right. Right. At number two. Well, okay, so that, there we've got it at one. At number two, yeah. we've got Bugs Bunny. Yes, absolutely. Uh, from a, a number of short films uh, that you pointed Space out Jim. correctly. You're and, still going to pepper in shots. No, I'm not. You're still going to. You, you got you exactly what correctly. you wanted. I said you pointed it out correctly. That's fine. I feel I, like an old married couple right no. now. You know what I mean? I don't even want to split the bill with you I didn't at this want point. to take out the trash. All right, number three, uh, Roger number Rabbit. Number three is Roger Rabbit, mm -hmm. which you omitted because you hate there's a part of your soul that he's burns with a passion of hatred so for annoying. Roger Rabbit. Look, he's two can play at this game. Annoying. Two can play at this game. I just like you like bunnies. It seems like you have a big thing for bunnies. There, Gonzo. All right. So I did notice that. I saw it at the top and was like, eh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> this whole list looks ridiculous. I know, right? And they got a big bear, and then I got a donkey, and then I got a. <laughs> yeah, they're all talking animals. All right. So my number four, or the, our number four would then be Dory, right? From yeah. the Finding Nemo series. Okay. Which I'm such a huge fan of, and I'm glad it's on the list. All right, what? What did you have at number three? Uh, I had Donkey from Shrek. So should we put that there? All right, I'll I would like to move Donkey. Like, well, well, I've got Baloo at three. Okay, and I love that movie much more than I love any Shrek movie. Wow, are you kidding me? Jungle Book? It's not even close. Baloo's on number eight on my list, though. We know how this works. Yeah, but it's my number three. Come on. I, I conceded it at number uh, one. Please give me yeah, something. But then you here. took two and three. Please give me something. It's Come not even on. a two. Okay. All right, fine. What do you want? Blue at number five? If, if you don't oh, mind. All right. Oh, there if you go. Don't See, mind. that's what I'm looking for. A little <laughs> understanding. A little oh, understanding. Oh, sass pants over here. All right. So number five, that's blue. All right. From the Jungle Book. And then uh, at number six, number six, I think we can definitely agree. Shrek. Donkey, yes, Donkey from Donkey Shrek. from Shrek. Yes, at number six, Good and stuff. it's a solid choice at six. Yes, I love it at six. Yes, and we've talked about it a few times. How much we enjoy Eddie Murphy's we performance. We have, we have Kermit in common after that. Okay, 
So I am happy to do that. Seven. Kermit the Frog. At seven, I have to put this in, you know, because I, you know, I just, I, I'm an old man. I forget things. So number seven, Kermit the Frog. Number seven. Right. All right. And then number eight, no. uh, I have Timon and Pumbaa left. What do you have next? I've got Rango at five. <sighs> and I don't have Timon and Pumbaa. Oh, man, that's heartbreaking. What do you have, have Timon, Timon and Pumbaa, and Pumbaa at? Number five. Oh, do you? Mm-hmm. And which since, number are we on? Since we gave on Baloo, number eight. Okay. I'll give you Timon and Pumbaa if you give me Rango. Yes. And number nine? Yeah, Timon and Pumbaa. And we well, let's do Timon. Let's let's do Timon and Pumbaa at number eight, right? Because we gotta like keep the pace here. It's true for certain people. We're flying that We don't want to mention names. What them? And we got Kermit at seven. And <laughs> I didn't realize we're still going too fast. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting thumbs up from the booth. Yeah, thumbs up right from the there. booth. So number nine. What did you want to put number nine? Oh, Rango. Rango. Right. So Rango, the Johnny Depp. And voiceover. what do you have uh, next? I after have Fantastic Rango. Mr. Fox. Should we put that at ten? I've got it at nine. We both have it on our list. We do. Because I've got that. Well, you got it at where? Uh, number six. Okay. All right. What did you have next? Did you want I had Robin Hood at seven, but I got Fantastic Mr. Fox at number nine. Yeah. I feel like Fantastic so, Mr. Fox at number nine. Fantastic two. Mr. Fox is okay. fine. And uh, we're going slow enough for certain people in the room. Fantastic. Still got thumbs up? Yes. Still Mr. got thumbs up. Fox. Oh. There we go. We just okay. need to get some hand signals going or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Give me some shooters. We're good. Hey, shooter. Uh, all right, so let's run down the list. Right? All right, all I'm right. gonna have to cheat with you. Oh and yeah, share. sure, no problem. You start writing no, down stay your where quick. You're at. We'll just like keep it here. All right, yeah. Enough. All right, get that frame. Yeah, back with up. the framing. Come on, we're it's a camera. It's in a podcast. All right, so uh, <laughs> at, you want to start? At 10? Yeah, sure. At number ten, Fantastic Mr. Fox. At number nine, Rango. At number eight, Timon and Pumbaa. At number seven, Kermit the Frog. At number six, Donkey. At number five, Baloo. Uh, at number four, Dory. At number three, Roger Rabbit. At number two, Bugs Bunny. And at number one, the top ten's to number one talking animal in movies is Jiminy Cricket. From Pinocchio. There it is, there guys. There it is. That's our list. I still want confetti to come down. <laughs> I know. We, gotta we will get out. a budget eventually. One show, one time, <laughs> I will make this happen. <laughs> Balloons, something. We'll, we'll get a crew to come in here and clean. And start throwing it at us. At least this week we didn't get immediate no's. They're just smiling politely at yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's going to happen, though. <laughs> I'm trying. I want that Rip Torn. Was it Rip Torn? What was his yeah, name? Yeah, he would throw, he the, would confetti. throw the confetti. He would throw the confetti. I don't know. I just went into a Paul Lynn. Hey, <laughs> They're all kind of interchangeable. Paul Lynn, Charles <laughs> yeah, Nelson, sure. Riley. All those guys. Well, Rip didn't try to pretend anything that he wasn't. Mm -hmm. Paul Lynn was trying to pass off as... He was. He was. He was not As, uh, out. Oh, 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 straight. Yeah. Oh, I, I think don't. Rip Torn was out from the moment he yes. know, got in front of a camera. With that fake hair has. It's great stuff. I don't know why I was covering it up. No, we're just uh, 70s. We just dated ourselves like crazy. All right. <laughs> so anyway, thanks so much, everybody, for watching this week. That's been the top 10 talking animals from the top 10 show. Uh, I'm John Roca. Uh, I am Matt Nose. Thank oh. you so much for tuning in this week. Where, um, where can people find you, Matt? Uh, you know what? Go to our uh, Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash the top 10 podcast, all spelled out. Actually, no, it's the, pardon me, the top 10 with the number 10 and then podcast. Yeah. I'm an go. idiot. And don't, don't say that. <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself. Search uh, for both. Who knows what you're going to come up with? <laughs> <laughs> and if it's a competing show, you take them down. Take them down. You take, take them out. Spam them with whatever you got. You know what I mean? Whatever meme you're tired of, just nail them. I think it's that guy who commented, the fat guy with glasses. All right, so um, you can follow me at The Roca Says, uh, T-H-E-R-O-C-H-A-S-A-Y-S. That's my homage to the Rock. See all the shows I'm hosting or co-hosting like this one. See all the shows I'm a guest on. And also, uh, you can follow us at Top Ten Show. Please follow our Twitter. Uh, Please. We, we are communicating with you guys. Leave comments on YouTube. Um, yeah, I will get around to responding yeah. to the comments at some point. I yeah. don't know if I'll get through all of them because last I checked, there was a boatload. Well, we're hoping to so, have a boatload every week. Uh, and yeah, that's always a blast. If you comment, I will do my darndest. Yeah. Here, I'm cleaning it up, guys. <laughs> to... Uh, to respond to as many as I possibly can, yeah. I'll set aside you know a chunk of time, and if I can bang out fifty to a hundred, great, I will bang out fifty, and it won't just be like thanks and then right. done. What's the point of that? Uh, and th please, everybody, subscribe to the channel, and a uh, big shout out to Adam and to Cody for helping us out to put the show up, uh, and thanks so much for watching, and we will see you all next week. Adios. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.